Joy Cartel Heavy Hitters in the house. Juggernaut HQ Gym. We got Chad Smith squatted 970 raw. And uh, he's about to take us through a sick ass squat session. So make sure you pay attention to this guy. We have three main technique points we talked about in the squat today. We talked about upper back position to get the tightest setup possible, the proper way to breathe during the squat, and also the type of mindset that you want to bring into a heavy squat. So yeah, let's get this. going down, his feet are tend to, his knees are kind of coming in, and his weight's coming to the inside and front of his foot. What you guys want to think about as you're squatting is keeping three even points of contact between your big toe, your little toe, and your heel. All right, so you know, think about press your big toe down to the ground, getting your regular squat stance. All right, so you want to maintain the even even weight between those three points. And as Juno squats down, I want him to think about trying to screw his feet into the floor. It's going to externally rotate his feet through the floor as he goes. That's going to help him maintain more even pressure throughout his foot. I'm going to do a little bodyweight squats like that. I'm going to make a regular face. Do that again. So in Juno's normal squats, he's going down. He's, he's rolling in and forward like that. We want to make sure that he maintains his even weight there, there, in the heel, and he's twisting his foot through the floor. That's going to help his knee track right over his toes instead of inside of him, and uh, allow him to, to use his hips and glutes a lot better throughout the whole lift. Just screw your feet to the floor as you go. Just do three body good spots. Good. Go down over here. Good. Yeah, so if you have problems with your heel coming off the ground as you squat, your weight rolling to the inside of your foot. Just think about that simple cue, three even points of contact, screw your foot into the floor. squat technique is the setup. And it's hard to have a good squat without starting everything off properly. That's all going to start with the way that you get underneath the bar. So if you have problems rounding over in the squat, getting pushed forward, it's very likely because you're lacking tightness in your upper back during the setup. And a good tight setup is three parts. All right, so first, Kevin gets under the bar. We want to get his hands in as close as possible to uh, be able to maximize upper back tension. So that's going to be dependent on how mobile your shoulders are. Yeah, Kevin's going to be able to get his hands a lot closer than the big boy, and we're working on that. But uh, the closer you can get your hands, automatically the tighter your upper back is going to get. So as Kevin goes ahead and ducks under the bar, put your hands out a little wider, Kevin, just for the example. So you can see his upper back right now, and then as he slides his hands in, go ahead and slide in my hands, automatically his upper back is getting tighter. All right, so that's step one to get good, good uh, upper back tightness in the setup. Step two, everything is going to squeeze towards the middle. He's going to pinch his shoulder blades together as hard as he can and try and retract his shoulder, uh, scapula together and try and pinch his elbows towards the middle of his back. So that's going to get everything in the upper back flexed. If you haven't done it like that before, really good chance that your upper back may cramp up while you're doing it. Third part for the really good setup is going to be your elbow position. Your torso angle is going to mimic your arm angle. So as Kevin keeps his elbows, uh, does a good job of keeping his elbows under the bar, his chest is going to stay up tall. If he was to have his elbows flare backwards, you can see the bar start to roll up his back and his chest is going to come forward. So the whole time that you're squatting, you know, once you draw everything towards the middle of your body, now you want to try and push your elbows underneath the bar. That's going to really create a lot of tension in your lats, keep a rigid torso, and keep uh, your back at the angle that you want throughout the lift.
the next thing we want to talk about in regards to squat technique is the mindset that you go under the bar with. I want you to treat 135 like your max and your max like 135. So that's a two-part statement. The first part meaning that every set you do, you know, whether it's the bar, 135, 225, you know, your warm-up sets, you want to focus on them. You want to practice great technique on every set possible. The second part of that statement, treat your max like 135, is you want to get under heavy weight with the same confidence that you get under light weights in your warm-up sets. So we all know as you're going through warm-up sets, you're confident, you're descending uh, aggressively, hitting the hole hard, you know, just confident in everything that you do. And whether you've seen it with yourself, uh, with the athletes that you coach, with your training partners, when they unrack a heavy weight, you can just see that look come over their face and it's like, oh shit, oh shit, this is heavy. And instead of going down, uh, you know, descending with the weight confidently, aggressively, and, and quickly, they start to go down really slow. That's going to waste a lot of energy. It's also uh, you know, not going to allow them to get the same rebound out of the hole. So treat 135 like your max, your max like 135. Practice great technique on every single set and treat heavy weights with the same confidence that you have with light weights. creating as much pressure as possible. That's gonna happen through the way that you breathe. So, a very common cue that you may have heard for the squat is big air in your belly, where you push your abs out into your belt. But by doing that and just taking air in forwards, you're gonna put your low back into extension, which isn't gonna be the strongest position for you nor the safest position for your low back. So I've dealt with herniated discs and low back injuries, and the stuff I'm about to talk to you guys about is the most important thing for me to rehab those back injuries, as well as take my squat from 900 all the way up to 970. So what we're gonna try and achieve is 360 degrees of pressure. We're gonna push our abs forward, our obliques out, and fill our low back with air. So as Jake gets under the bar, just go ahead and unrack it. And he sets up. He doesn't want to just think about breathing in here. All right, but we want to think about pushing your obliques out to the side. So he's gonna start breathing in through his nose and then finish taking in as much air as possible through his mouth. So we're creating as much as much pressure as physically possible, pushing his obliques out to the side. And as he does that too, he's gonna to wanna to flex his glutes. That's gonna set his hips right underneath him. Go ahead and grab it. So what we're trying to achieve there with getting Jake's hips underneath him and 360 degrees of pressure, is if you were to think about a soda can, an empty soda can that's sitting on the table, and you try and smash it, it takes you know, a, lot of, a lot of force to try and crush it. But as soon as you put a dent in that can, then it's gonna smash right away. So if you're taking big air just in your belly and creating extension in your low back, that's like denting the soda can. It's weakening the structure. So we wanna create a neutral spine and fill that up with as much pressure as possible. It needs to be very deliberate, taking in as much air as physically possible. You wanna create so much pressure that you feel like your head is gonna pop off. So that's the ideal way to, to create pressure for the squat. You wanna breathe in through the nose, finish through the mouth, push the obliques out to the side, 360 degrees of pressure at circumferential expansion. That's gonna help you squat the most and stay the healthiest. All right, thank you. All right, so as we talked about earlier, Gino was having trouble uh, creating tension through his feet and maintaining those three even points of contact. So it's causing his knee to track inside of his, uh, his foot a little bit, which makes it hard for him to hit depth. So if you're having a hard time kind of visualizing the cue of screwing, of screwing your feet into the ground, this is a really simple way to do it. I'm just going to have Gino stand on these two plates and he's literally just going to try and twist the plates as he squats. So odds are the plates aren't actually going to turn unless you're on a really slippery floor, but that's going to help uh, yourself or your athletes visualize this idea better of screwing the feet into the floor, externally rotating and maintaining those three even points of contact. You can see as Gino's going too, his foot is actually turning out a little bit. That could be a sign of an ankle movement restriction, and it might be better for Gino to actually just start with his toes turned out a little bit more than he's been doing currently.
got the 181 Pitbull Taurus grinding out 540 for reps, baby. About to kill this shit right here. Let's get it. Baby, you know what it is? Time to bang that real steel. Right here, banging out that real kilo shit right here. Really pushing kilos. Juggernaut gym, baby. Chad showed you how to get it done. Now I'm about to show you how to move this shit. Yeah, yeah. Pause above parallel, and uh, Chad's going to explain what these do. So, really a common sticking point that people have in the squat is, you know, they explode out of the hole well and about two or three inches above parallel on the way up, they tend to get stuck. And the simplest way to build strength in a specific position is to spend more time in that position, and pauses are going to inherently force you to do that. So you're going to want to hit the hole aggressively, and then as you rebound out of the hole, uh, one to two inches above parallel, then you're going to want to pause. The spot that you're thinking about, that you, you really hope I'm not talking about pausing, that's exactly where you need to pause. Uh, don't cheat yourself on it and, and pause above the sticking point. That's really not going to accomplish the, the goal of the exercise. Hell yeah, this shit ain't no joke. So make sure you try these. Let's go. 